In previously the uh, video lectures, we talked about inverse uh, Z transform, its properties, theorems, and uh, Z transform of elementary functions. Today, I will talk about inverse Z transform. If you look at the textbook, you can see that we, uh, there are four different methods that we can use uh, to compute or derive the Z transform. Some of them are in the computation side and some of them are in the analytical side. Okay, first one is the direct division, which will be the topic of the, this video lecture. Second one is uh, using Z transform tables, partial fraction expansion. This is uh, the uh, method that you are familiar with from your uh, previous classes, 302 and 301. Simulation method, which is a, a computational method, which I really like uh, about this course and these details. And inversion integral method, which I will not cover in this course. Again, it's more uh, using the definition of the inverse Z transform, and it's in the analytical theoretical side. I don't think it's very critical to cover this in this course. So if you look at the textbook, if you don't understand these contents, it's fine. Okay, but still recommend you to have a look at that to get the idea what is inversion integral. But in this course, I will cover one, two, and three. Okay, let's start with the direct division. So direct division method uses the fact that we can write x of z in this form. Okay, so as you can see, this is the definition of z transform, right? What is the z transform? Uh, we have z complex exponential, z to the power minus k, is x of k in a summation element. If I uh, open the sum, I obtain a series like this, x0, x plus 1, x1, z to the power minus 1, x2, z to the power minus 2, it goes like this. And these are the time domain variables, right? Okay, this is x0, this is x1, this is x2, and it goes like this. Okay, so uh, in this course, we assume that we can write x of z, which is uh, the z transform of a system or z transform uh, of a variable, in terms of ratio of two polynomials in z or z to power minus one. Okay, so we assume that x of z is a ratio uh, transfer function uh, and numerator and denominator can be written in terms of polynomials. Okay, so of course there's a wide variety of Z trans transforms, but uh, in this course we are limiting ourselves to these transfer functions, which is perfectly fine for discrete time control systems. Okay, so what's the idea? The idea is converting this into this. Okay, using long division method. Okay, so instead of uh, talking about the method uh, as a general transfer function, I will directly give a specific example, I think which is perfect to find to understand the whole concept. Okay, let's go ahead. And it's an example. x of z, uh, z to the power minus 1, 1 minus 2 to uh, z to the power minus 1, and plus z to the power minus 2. In direct division method, it's much easier to write your uh, z transform in terms of the polynomials of z to the power minus 1. Okay, so it's also possible to do it uh, when it is just z, but this is just a, a simpler and easier technique. Okay, so what we do is, it's division. So we will divide z to the power minus 1. Okay, so just give some space because I have like that. Okay, z to the power minus 1. And here, okay. Just, yeah, just do that, 1 minus 2 c to the power minus 1 plus c to the power minus 2. Okay, so what are we going to do? We will match the coefficients just in the, the normal division. So what we can do, we can match z to the power minus 2 to z to the power minus 1. That's a possible t. Or we can match this to the z to the power minus 1. In long division, you need to do that. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so if I multiply this with z to the power minus 1, and I will do something easier for us, z to the power minus 1, what happens? Let's check. This is z to the power minus 1, minus 2 z to the power minus 2, plus z to the power minus 3. As you can see, in terms of z to the power minus 1, I have a higher order polynomial. In that sense, this is a long division. It will be very long. Actually, it will be infinitely many long. Okay, let's subtract this. This is 2 
c to the power minus 2 plus, not plus, yes, it is minus c to the power minus 3. Let's change the colors. Let's do this. Okay. Uh, now, let's do the same thing. We will always match the higher order term, but in terms of like z or lower order term, uh, to the other term. So this is minus 2. So now what I need to do is plus 2 c to the power minus 2. 2 c to the power minus 2. Okay, so okay, it's, not, it's fine. Uh, minus 4 c to the power minus 3 plus 2 c to the power minus 4. Okay, if I subtract this, what I obtain is this. 3 c to the power minus 3 minus 2 c to the power minus 4. Okay, got it. That's fine. Let's change the colors to yellow, which is fine. So this is 3. So if I write 3, c to the power minus 3, 3, c to the power minus 3, minus 6, c to the power minus 4, my plus 3, z to the power minus 5, because 3, 2 is minus 5. Okay. So if I subtract this, what I obtain? 4, c to the power minus 4, minus 3, c to the power minus 5. Let's change the color again, pick a different color, such as, okay, good. So now, 4, c to the power minus 4. Okay, so let's do the same thing. It is 4, c to the power minus 4. It goes like this, and it will go like this. Okay, as you can see, now we obtain a pattern, right? It's a pattern. It's a kind of uh, looks like a nice pattern. And if you see that, it will be like one, two, three, four. It will be five, six, seven, eight. Eight will go like that. So this is uh, the structure in your lecture notes. So technically, x of c is equal to zero plus c to the power minus one plus two c to the power minus two plus three c to the power minus three. So let's clean that. Let's do an object eraser. Okay. Plus 4, z to the power minus 4, and it goes like this. Uh, if I take the inverse z transform, x of k is equal to 0 sigma k plus, what is the inverse tra z transform z to the power minus 1? It is Kornak log delta function divided 1. So it is 1 times k minus 1 plus 2 times delta k minus 2 plus 3 delta k minus 3 plus 4 delta k minus 4. It goes like this. So what is this? It's a simple RAM function. x of k is equal to k. And if you recognize, it's possible if you're not, this is the transform of the unit ram function. Okay, because we know, we assume that x of k is greater than zero, uh, less than, it's equal to zero for k is less than zero. Okay, it's a ram. Okay, in the direct division method, in general, the main idea is obtaining a numerical like solution. It may not be possible to obtain a, a closed form expression, but sometimes in the midterms or exams, I just want you to uh, me to compute, the, for example, inverse transform or time domain solution for just the first five samples. Okay. In in this case, if I don't want you to come up with a closed form expression, you can use this technique just fine because it's kind of simple. The idea uh, you need to do some bookkeeping, but it's more like algorithmic solution. You don't need to memorize anything. You don't need to look in the tables. Just do long division. Be careful with the math. You can find the solution. 